hello friends hope you all are doing well so uh, this is the next video in high yield traction theory series in this again i will explain some advanced concept of traction theory so if you have not watched watched previous videos then uh, please don't jump over here so please go back and watch uh, all previous videos continuously then come here okay so this is me and uh, moving ahead we were discussing uh, traction parameters I have told you there are five dimensions and parameters to use uh, used to describe the tactic performance. Okay, so uh, the first one is slip, second one is motion resistance ratio, third one is net traction ratio. Uh, if you don't know all these terms, then please don't watch this video. Go back and watch previous videos, then come back again. Now in this video, I will explain gross traction ratio and tractive efficiency. Okay, so moving ahead, what is gross traction ratio? So, uh, gross traction is the traction force, okay, and gross traction ratio is the dimensionless ratio, as always, uh, which is the ratio of gross traction developed by the tractor divided by dynamic reaction force. So, always in denominator, in all ratios, this is present dynamic reaction force, RR, W. If you don't know what RR or W is, then go back and watch previous videos, okay. So, basically, gross traction is is as I told you in my traction video that traction is is the conversion of uh, rotary motion uh, which is produced due to torque coming from engine to linear motion uh, which which is uh, which is uh, the resultant or which is the traction uh, and which helps the tractor to move forward. So basically, GTR is uh, is the ratio of T divided by R into W. So T is the engine torque. R is the rolling radius of tire, W or RR is a normal load or reaction force. Okay, so this gross traction ratio is basically your input from the engine. Okay, is now converting into this performance parameter which is gross traction ratio. Okay, so basically it is the axial torque input converted to a pulling force. It is the, the pull which you would develop if there were no motion resistance loss. So if there will be not any loss, then this uh, complete torque will be converted into pulling force. But you, as you know that there are slip, there are motion resistance ratio, which is basically the losses. So because of these losses, you will not be able to convert this complete pull, complete torque into pull. Okay. So uh, how much pull you will be developed? That is your coefficient of traction or coefficient of rolling resistance, which I have explained in my previous video okay so basically this gross traction ratio is the summation of net traction ratio plus motion resistance ratio so motion resistance ratio is actually your loss and net traction ratio is actually your use useful uh, work with the help of which you are doing your useful work or with the help of which you are pulling your implement so we are denoting gtr by mu g ntr or coefficient traction by mu and motion resistance ratio by rho then mu g will be equal to mu plus rho so basically gross traction ratio is the summation of net traction ratio plus your loss which is motion resistance ratio okay so again how to measure it then the, again there are two equations one is wismer lewis equation and second is Brix's equation as always so i will not put Brix's equation that is a complex equation with lot of parameters which you, uh, you will not be required for uh, your any semester exam or for your gate exam or for your GRF exam but this wismer lewis equation you have to remember so this is an experimental again uh, empirical value so this mu g is 0 0.75 into 1 minus exponential to the power minus 0 0.3 into cn into s where s is uh, slip of the tire now cn is uh, you know the cn if you don't know what is cn and what is bn then please stop this video go back and watch my previous videos and then come back so if your slip value is very high then you can see that and if your cn is infinite okay then this whole term this whole term will become zero okay then whole term will become zero and uh, this mu g will become 0 0.75 so maximum 75 percent so maximum traction which you can get on on a surface will be 75 percent okay uh, so it is coming from this merluth equation but if you see Brix's equation, if you know uh, Brix's equation, you can search in Google Brix's uh, tire equation. You will find uh, there are some different equations. There you will find that maximum uh, gross traction you can get is 0.88, okay, with the help of that equation. 
so i have told you uh, there are uh, two three equation this is the equation of motion resistance ratio given by this model loop and this is the equation of gross traction ratio given by this model loop so you already know that mu g is equal to mu plus rho so we, uh, from here you can calculate mu the coefficient coefficient of traction mu will be mu g minus rho so you can calculate your mu g with the help of this model loop equation you can calculate rho with your this model loop equation and then you can subtract these two things to get your coefficient of traction or net traction ratio okay so guys and uh, you know cn is what cn is cibd by w if you don't know cn then go back and watch our previous videos so guys this this uh, table is of extreme importance okay all your uh, traction equa traction equations can be solved if you remember equations written inside this table okay so please remember all these uh, four three four equations okay guys then again i will explain uh, this uh, gross traction ratio and slip relationship with the help of this graph okay so on y axis this is your gross traction ratio on x axis this is your slip so, so you can see uh, this model uh, brexis equation is written over here so you can see it if you if your cone c n is infinite then your mobility number will become infinite then this term will become zero so your maximum traction will be 0.88 plus 0.04 so this will be 0.92 so with the, with the help of Dix's equation maximum tractive tra tra force will be 92% uh, but here you can get maximum is 0.75 only okay because Brixius uh, have considered more factors and it is giving you uh, better prediction of traction whereas Usmer and Luth has considered less factors only Cn because Bn includes more factor than Cn okay so again you see once your slip for any single curve if you take once your slip is start increasing then your uh, this gross traction ratio will increase then it will become constant and then it will it is flat so this curve and your previous in my previous video i have explained coefficient of traction curve these two are perfect these two are perfectly same okay so again if your mobility number is reducing then gtr will reduce if your mobility number is increasing then your gtr will increase and for uh, same thing same curve if your slip is increasing then initially your gtr will increase then it will become constant so again there will be optimum range of slip which is required for optimum gtr which is uh, again uh, 8 to 15 percent or 10 to 15 percent or 20 percent okay so this is gtr now our next parameter and last parameter is which is tractive efficiency so what is tractive efficiency tractive efficiency is actually uh, output power by input power okay so your output power is actually your drawer power with the help of drawer power you are pulling your implement so your output is drawer power or your pull whereas input is wheel power or you can say engine power also so then uh, always as always uh, output will not be same as input there will be some amount of power loss always so because of that power loss which is uh, slip and uh, motion resistance okay so these two are contributing into power loss due to which your output will not be same as input okay guys so uh, this is the equation for tractive efficiency it is a ratio of output power by input power now your output power is drawer power or pull so you can make it pull p by w or input power is coming from engine so we basically it is gtr so we basically it is gtr or this is ntr so cot that is mu divided by gtr that is mu g so you can write it uh, you can write it as mu by mu g into 1 minus s or p by f p is the pull force or f is the traction force gross traction force so pull by f into 1 by s mu by mu g into 1 by s p by w divided by q by, by r w into 1 by s so these are the equation of tractive efficiency guys if you if you if your concepts are clear that you know what is the output power output power is drawer power now what is the drawer power it is draft into actual velocity so uh, and what is input power input power is coming from the engine side so in from engine side you have your torque so this torque divided by r rolling radius this will give you force and uh, so basically this pull force divided by tra uh, traction force into 1 minus s Similarly, if you divide this both term by W, then you will get COT over here, 
the mu and the mu g gtr over here so mu by mu g into 1 minus s so guys slip is also contributing here pull is also contributing here traction is also contributing here okay so this is how these equations are of extreme importance so basically here we are saying tractive efficiency but if you say uh, tractive inefficiency then what is the reason for tractive inefficiency so there are two reason one is velocity loss which is due to slip and second one is pull loss which is, uh, which is basically your complete engine torque is not uh, able to convert into pull due to motion resistance okay so uh, basically we can say that total power loss is the combination of power loss due to slip as well as power loss due to rolling resistance okay guys try to understand what i am saying try to listen carefully so if power loss is happening due to slip it means that our tractor is under blast as i have told you in slip video the ways to reduce slip one of the way to reduce slip was to put more weight on the tractor so if your power loss is happening due to slip then it means that your tractor is under blasted or under performing but if your power loss is happening due to ro rolling resistance it means you have put more weight on the tractor so your tractor is over blasted okay so now this graph is of extreme importance again now this is uh, this y axis is your tractor efficiency x axis is yield slip okay so basically your uh, for if you take any curve initially your uh, tractor efficiency will increase drastically with even slight increase in wheel slip then it will attain a maximum value and then it will start reducing okay so here you can see this is the range 10% to around 18% where you can get maximum tractor efficiency guys mind it if tractor efficiency is highest then your tra tractor tractor is better okay so this is the only parameter on the basis of which you can say that your tractor is which tractor is better which one which one is not better so basically uh, tractor efficiency and coefficient of traction these two out of these five parameters will decide uh, actually the performance of your tractor okay so even if uh, now in you remember the coefficient of traction curve there uh, coefficient of traction will also start increasing with slip then it will attain a maximum value and after that it will become flat okay but the maximum value of cot you are attaining you are attaining at around 20% but here the maximum maximum tractive efficiency you are attaining somewhere around 15% okay so you, there is a trade off between tractive efficiency and coefficient of traction so this is this 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 if you draw a line okay this line so this line will be so this line will be your optimum performance line so this line is li lie between 8% to 20% slip or 15% slip so this is the optimum value of slip at which you should operate your tractor if you are operating your tractor below 8% then then your uh, power is getting lost due to high amount of rolling resistance okay so it means that your tractor is over blast this is this 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 region is being uh, be, being controlled by load and if your slip is very high then in this this area this region is being controlled by slip okay so here your tractor is under blast you should put more weight on your tractor if your slip is very high so this range this area is be controlled by slip and this area is controlled by rolling resistance so this is your optimum operating zone which is between 8% to 15% slip again if you reduce your bn number your tractive tractive efficiency will reduce so higher the mobility number higher will be your tractive efficiency so these are the significance of mobility number again you have seen uh, time and time again what is the significance of mobility number so uh, this is the concept of tractive efficiency okay guys i hope you are clear now uh, if still you have any doubt uh, please ask me in uh, in the comment section i will be more than happy to clear all your doubts so basically i have explained all five traction parameters okay guys so these all five parameters are of extreme importance and please watch all these video time and time again to uh, clear your concept thank you very much guys for watching in next video i will combine all these factors together and then i will explain it further uh, new concepts of traction okay thank you very much for watching please like the video and subscribe the channel and spread the words to your uh, to your friends and your